everyone, you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel and today I'm going to be showing you how to use your acrylic inks and create this lovely picture of a protea. So what I'm going to be doing today is using acrylic ink. So the difference between acrylic ink and your normal watercolour inks, which are extremely popular at the moment, is that watercolour inks will reignite with water. So if you wet them back down again, you can move them around. Acrylic inks have an acrylic binder in them and they you can layer them beautifully without them melting together. So you can use them together with your watercolour inks for different things. Now you will love using these, they're so bright and vibrant. So let's get started and I'll show you how to use them. So today I'm using Derivan acrylic inks and they're such fun inks. They're Australian made and the link will be in the description if you're wanting to try them out. They work just like watercolours and they're really great. You could also use watercolour colours for this project. And you can see here, make sure you have your lid on before you shake your bottles. And because they have a pigment in ink in the bottom, you do need to shake the bottle before you start. Now I'm just using a big brush and I'm putting yellow on this first. So there's, I haven't pre-wet the background. I am using 300 GSM watercolour paper and where I'm putting the yellow is pretty much where the leaves and the background is. I'm going a little bit into the flowers but I'm pretty much leaving the space free so that the flowers will be the pinky colours. So you can see here I'm just going around and I really wanted the inside of that main protea to be quite bright yellow. So I've done a big sort of splash of the yellow. Just be really loose with your brush strokes. It's important in this case not to be, you know, cut, make it look like it's colored in. So now what I'm doing is I'm using the magenta. Now, again, you can see there it's a little bit watery because I needed to shake my container. So get that pigment off the bottom of the container, give it a bit of a shake. Make sure the lid is shut and I'm just putting a little bit of colour in and then just over the proteas I'm going to put a bit of the pink colour and I use a paper towel. I usually use a toilet roll with a paper towel but today I didn't have that out. So you can see here I'm using my brush in strokes that are similar to the shape of the protea flower. So don't colour in, don't do little tiny strokes. Use your biggest brush and brush in in the shapes of the flower. And that's going to really help with the shaping of it later and to get that kind of looseness to it. I'm now going to use my green ink and um, this is a really sort of a Christmas tree green I guess so having the yellow underneath it really does help and I'm going to put some other colours over the top of it as well but you can see here I'm just putting it where the leaves are and adding just brushing it in where the leaves are and I'm going to add some darker colours to it as, as well. So everything at the moment is just undercoating and it's to give that looseness to your picture. Um, make sure your brush is really big. Now, now I'm going to mix up. I'm using green, some yellow in it so that it's going to take it a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to add some violet to it. And this darkens it quite a lot. So it's like a purpley violet color. And I'm going to do add the this to the darker area in the leaves. So you just again, you can see how I'm doing my strokes, very loose, kind of looking at where the dark areas are in my picture. And from that I can create a bit of movement in the picture. So just a bit of dark strokes. Don't cover all your green. You want to have some light, you want to have some dark, and you want to have some in between. So just keep adding that the dark till you're satisfied that you've got a bit of um, change to the color. So those are my undercoat areas and I've let them dry so that I can add the next color to it. Now in this case I'm using my blue. Now this is quite a dark inky blue and I'm going to use it to go around the edges of um, the, the flowers and the leaves 
and I'm creating my background. Now this one I am going to be, even though I'm still using a loose brush stroke, I am trying to cut around it so that I have the definite shapes of the flower and the definite shape of the leaf. So it's just a matter of going through and looking at the edges of what you're doing and making sure that you have the shapes correct. And it's amazing that when we add those um, shapes, people recognize, you, you immediately recognize a leaf or a flower by just cutting around it with the color. So we don't want a yellow background, we want the background to be darker, but the yellow showing through the blue also gives a look of other foliage in the background. So the next color I'm going to get out is my crimson. So the crimson will help me with creating definition in the flowers. And again, we're not going to cover the whole flower again. We're actually going to work in sections. Now the protea has these um, kind of petals that overlap um, each other. And we want to define those a little bit. So I'm using my crimson to do that. So adding a little bit of crimson, looking at the shape there where I'm putting it. Now I want to blend that in. So I'm just drying my brush off and I'm just using the damp brush with very little paint on it to blend that in. And I'm going around each one of those petals. So it, even though this is still a loose painting, these little bits of detail really bring um, life to your um, picture. So just taking my time to do this. I'm also dropping little bits of blue in and the blue helps darken the color without being making it gray or dirty. It actually brightens the dark areas. So just um, work your way through over the, the whole flower. Now I'm being very, very careful as I get to the center of this protea to make sure that I darken it towards the center, but also have that beautiful yellow, almost, it looks almost like a fire. I always think protea look like little fire um, flowers. So I'm just making sure here that I leave the yellow and I'm just deepening some of the color around it. So deepening the color around it, um, not only gives us shadow areas, but it also gives us that, um, in, makes it feel like it's coming forward because all the colors we're using there are brighter. So when you get to this, be very, very careful. And I'm just adding slight bits of that um, purple or the blue to add a bit of definition without it being too much definition. Now, when I start to do the um, background protea, I'm going to put some of the bright color on it, but I also want to dull this color down. So you can see here I'm adding some blue to the magenta because I just want to dull it down. I don't want it to be as clean and bright as the one behind it, oh, sorry, in front of it. Um, so this one here I'm doing in much more muted colors, almost mixing up a little bit of a purple so that the this background flower is more muted. You can see in the photograph that the flower is, the background one is not as, um, vivid as the foreground one. We're also going to add shadows to this and this will help give you the depth. Even though it's a loose painting, you still want that depth between the front and the back flower. So now it's time to get a little bit of detail in and I, I'm using the violet to put the detail in. I could use black, but I always think black is such a dull color. So the violet here, I'm just putting little bits of detail in with the dark color and the violet will actually help you to put those things in. So go around, go through around your leaves and um, through around your petals just gently. Now making sure that you don't look, make it look like it's colored in. So not solid lines around what you're doing. It's important to keep your lines loose. Um, practice on a piece of paper with your loose brush lines. Um, it's, and use, I tend to use a bigger brush than what I need when I'm doing this kind of loose painting. And you can see it's really not perfect lines. So I'm darkening that background a bit so that just behind the flowers looks like there's a bit more tree and you can see all the little bits. And the way I'm brushing still gives the impression that there could be leaves in the background. Now I am delicately going around 
the shape of the flower just to make sure that you um, don't lose the shape of that background flower. You can see here, I'm, you can just dampen your brush and just spread it a little bit more. Now, this really does make quite a difference to your painting. And this is where I'm defining where each petal is or each leaf is in the um, background. So it's important that the center of the main flower has the most detail because this is dragging you into the picture. So I'm being very careful when I do the shadows in that center of the flower to make sure that it's what pulls you into the picture. Now I tend to revisit places. So I will go back to places on the flower. I'd, I sit back and I have a look at it and I go, how do I make this go forward and that go backwards? So brightening it up brings it forward, darkening it brings it back. I also want to do a little bit more of the magenta just sort of to see that to show up that side of the flower and I'm going mainly on the big flower on the top and just brightening some areas so that that flower really feels like it's so now I'm getting out my black and I'm going to be ever ever so careful with how much black I put into this picture I'm just going to add some black to define some areas to give some real proper um, darks in there and also slight bits of detail so you'll see as I go through this I am really using the black very sparingly black can dull down a picture and um, it really doesn't benefit you. I'm also going to shadow under that first flower, the, the main flower, so that the other flower looks like it's further behind. So um, that's what I'm doing here. So as I come to the end, you'll see me doing some little touch-ups with my brush. I want to put some fine lines in my leaves to make them look like leaves because I do have a line down them. Just be really careful that you are using very light brush strokes and break those brush strokes up. Don't just do a full brush stroke. Have one that breaks up halfway through. It just looks so much better and so much more professional. I'm also going to do some sprinkling of um, yellow on the background here. And to finish this picture off, I'm going to use white gouache. Now you could have masked out sections on it and to make sure that you had that white that you could take off. But I'm just using gouache and I'm being very careful here again to work this just on the edge of pet petals so that they stand out. So it's like the sun is hitting them. And um, I think these finishing touches really give shape to your flower. So as you're putting these bits of white on, you know, do them bit by bit, stop, have a look to see whether you think you've got the right amount. I also want to really brighten up that center so it drags us into the picture. So there's only really one thing left to do is to take our tape off. Now I have used an A3 piece of um, watercolour paper in a block so I'm going to have to wait till my other painting is done before I can cut this one in half because it's a, um, a block. But you can see here that as soon as we take the tape off that it looks very vivid and very beautiful. I really enjoyed doing this project with the Derivan inks, but you can also use watercolour inks or you can use the Derivan watercolour paints or any watercolour paints that you have. So thank you for joining me with this beautiful um, Protea painting and I hope you subscribe to my channel and I will see you again soon. You're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel.